All right, in this video, we're going to start planning our previs. As mentioned in the last video, your goal was to come up with a large or global story, uh, which you're going to put this scene in. And so uh, as you look at your story, maybe you already know where you're going to uh, put it. Uh, basically, you want to start thinking about this as well in this. Uh, uh, here's the handout that can be made available to you. Uh, it's in the uh, package that your teacher has and they can give you a copy. Uh, there is a, a really good video here that explains what a previs is using a 3D example, which is usually where previs is used. Uh, in a more uh, traditional uh, story format, they use uh, st storyboarding. But instead, uh, since we're using Unreal Engine, Unreal Engine is a really powerful tool that can really allow to do previs really quickly. And it allows you to change the cameras, the lights, and all this. And in, in this tutorial, we're going to be teaching you some of the basics. As well, down here, it really does a really good job of explaining this video, uh, how to break your previs down into action points. Now, when you're writing an essay, the, the equivalent action point would be bullet points. So the main points. So, uh, for example, I was talking about a zombie princess, uh, you know, be, zombie meta zombie princess. Okay, so... The, maybe you're taking the scene where they meet. So what's the first thing that happens? Well, maybe the first thing that happens, and you'll see here's, uh, you know, I already have one here that I put in as an example, but the first action I could say with the zombie princess is uh, he notices her across the room. So there's maybe a shot of the zombie's head looking across the room at the uh, zombie princess. And just that is important because one of the things that um, I wrote here is show not tell so the thing about a previs like a storyboard it should show the viewer uh, or give a viewer a good sense of what's happening without having uh, put the dialogue in so we're not putting the dialogue in okay uh, what a previs does is it just shows this kind of bare bone skeleton of the story and normally there probably would be a script attached to it. And, and that's something the teacher could definitely build in. Uh, and we'll talk about that uh, when we get there. Uh, but for now, uh, what you're doing is you want to come up with the bullets. And you'll see that in the assignment, I said I don't want more than five to eight. Because if you're starting to put too many, it means uh, your scene's too complex. You, you're making it. You know, I realize one of the challenges is going to be because you're going to want to make it look like a fully flushed out uh, scene. Uh, and it's meant to be a previs. And a previs is it gives you an idea of the camera angles, the camera shots that you can use. And one of the things you're going to see is what kind of camera shots are you using? Okay. And I included a handout for three and four, and I'll go straight to them. So there's a lot of resources on this on the web, and I even included a really good uh, blog that explains it much more in detail, which I would really encourage the teacher to have students take time maybe to do this before they uh, do this part and start filling it in. Uh, and well, and definitely looking at these shots. So here are sh shot sizes. Well, we have the extreme long shot. Usually when, a, if you watch most movies, uh, we call it the establishing shot. The first scene in a movie is called the establishing shot. So it might be a scene of, you know, the zombie uh, environment where they are from afar. So right away we know, okay, we get a lot of information. This is a, some kind of zombie apocalypse. Uh, it's not business as usual. Just by seeing the scene, the viewer psychologically has a sense of what is happening. Uh, and these different shots, you know, create different effects like... A, a close up or a big close up like this creates a lot of familiarity and permits identifying with the character. Okay. Uh, if we look at some of the shot angles, uh, you know, this is a regular uh, eye level shot is kind of your boring the average normal shot. A high shot is kind of like uh, you're looking down at this character. It creates that psychological effect. Uh, this other shot, uh, well, we'll say low or warm's eye, both of them kind of look the, the same where there's a sense that you're below this uh, person where the camera is and you look up. So all this can be done in Unreal Engine, by the way. So what we're trying to do right now is get you to think, what will this first shot look like? So the obviously the first shot is your establishing shot. So that one's easy. It's just the environment from far. 
But your second shot is, okay, well, what's your first shot? Is it of the zombie princess or or is it of the zombie, uh, you know, uh, dude who notices her? Uh, you know, you, so you got to make some decisions. And you only have eight items, so you, you need to make them work. So maybe in this first scene, there's like a whole bunch of stuff that happens. Like he, she notices it, he reaches into her, his wallet, grabs something. Well, maybe the first scene is... We got to also be realistic because, you know, 3D animation is complex. Like they're reaching into a wallet can be done. You'd probably need a mocap suit. Uh, so what I would do is have a shot of, of uh, you, you put the general large shot of the first scene. And maybe in the next scene, he starts walking over. So, you know, so you don't put all the little details. Uh, that's what is basically happening here. Okay. So it's like. Major beat is the word that's often used in storyboarding. Uh, major beat. So you don't put every single, uh, well, it is one scene. So you could argue you can. But uh, what I'm trying to say is you only have, by the time you get to either five or seven or eight, I have an idea. Okay, then this scene is where he meets the zombie princess. And the, there seems to be some kind of magic in the air or something. Or he, he seems to uh, want to get to know her, but he's too shy. And somehow with the animations and, and, and environment and character you selected, this is going to happen. And of course, the shot type. So you should think about putting these in. Now, one thing that I recommend, but you don't have to do this, uh, but I think it's a, it's a really good one, is that you go here and let's say you're like, you want an extreme close up. So I use on a uh, PC, Windows Shift S. So let's say I'm thinking I want this. Now, I could just, instead of writing it, shot type, just put it in there. Okay? So I know I want a close-up. Maybe you want to write a few notes. And and so what happens is when you're going to create your scenes, you know, number one, this is what I'm doing. Number two, this is what I'm doing. And camera movement, well, if we go to number four, so we have a pan left, pan right, so command shift S. And on a Mac, I believe it's Command Shift 4 or Windows Shift S for a PC. And what I can do is I can already, oops, I got a couple of these documents open, sorry. So I'm just going to put this one here and maybe I want a pan. And, you know, and if you're not sure, go look at what does a pan look like. There's a ton of, uh, in, in, in that uh, link that I gave you. I think at the bottom here, you can kind of get more on the psychological impacts of different camera shots and so and so on. Excuse me. Uh, you can get that. All right. So this is a really, really important step. And once again, same thing as last time, I would say teachers, don't let them move on to the next step until they have this. And like here where it says animation, what does that mean? Well, it means that you went to Mixamo and you know that you needed an idle animation, okay? So maybe the first scene is a scene of your character just dancing, you know, the character is just dancing, all right? So you know that's going to be your first scene. So you're going to have to, in this document, write dancing animation, okay? Oops, I'm going to, I was going to put it over here, but dancing, well, that would be the fourth scene, you right? So you go, you have to write down, and, and we're going to talk about this, uh, when we get to the stage where we're downloading assets and so on, okay? And I should have wrote actually the right name of the animation. This is, there's, there's actually hundreds of animations called dancing. So this is hip-hop dancing, female hip-hop sidestep dancing. Maybe that's what you want to write, okay? So that, or what you can do is already start downloading them. But I, I don't want you to do that right now because I am going to show you how to download them properly because there's a whole kind of, technical way to do it so that uh, it works well so for this point i would say maybe again command shift s oops i'm gonna i'm gonna do that again apologies command i'm gonna go with command shift s and maybe just this because if you're like lazy like me you'd rather not type it or whatever uh command tab oops i'm just gonna go here and right and I'm, I'm gonna paste it and even if this is three four pages long uh i have i know what to go get I'll, I'll have the name here and i don't have to guess later 
So don't download stuff actually now. That would be a mistake because there are there is kind of a, a sequence you have to follow so that it's not a pain uh, later on. Okay. So work on your uh, previs, and by the end of this stage, you kind of know everything you're going to be doing from one to five or one to six or one to seven. And I think you shouldn't go more than eight. If you're going more than eight, it means your previs is too long. And you could break it down in two. And, uh, you know, our goal is to get all this to work and have a basic previs. Okay. Uh, we are all beginners and th therefore you should set your expectations to that. All right. Thank you.